Hey everybody, welcome back to another Spending Time with Iconic Ivan. And today we are spending some time with Adrian Tramp from Aza Watches. He's been around for quite a while. He's got a few great watches on the market and he's been doing a lot of cool stuff. He hasn't been standing stagnant since this uh, whole pandemic started. He's been He's been out there hustling. So um, we're going to find out what he's been up to. A uh, quick update on the iconic stuff. Uh, I know that we were supposed to have them have our first shipment released from customs on Friday, which I haven't heard back from them yet, which I'm assuming they haven't moved yet. So until I get more information, I don't want to say that, yes, they've moved. Um, so we're just kind of still in that holding waiting pattern. Hopefully something happens soon. I know that there's been issues with customs and a lot of stuff coming through and they're dealing with a lot of volume. So we just got to kind of wait it out. There's nothing we can do right now. So it is what it is. But anyway, that's not what we're here for today. Today we're here for Adrian Tramp and, uh, and Aza Watches. I'm excited to have him on. I did an interview with him last year uh, whenever we were still involved with Soma. And uh, now we get to kind of talk freely about the about the market. So let's go ahead and bring on Adrian and uh, let him introduce himself. Hey, Adrian, what's going on, brother? Hey, man. Oh, how you how doing? You? Excellent. How, it's great to see you, you again, man. Long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, how so let's tell everybody what you've been up to lately. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, maybe some people uh, watched our previous video. Uh, I don't know. I'm, um, I'm Adrian, 27, living in Switzerland, originally from the Netherlands. I studied uh, watchmaking in the Netherlands and moved to Switzerland, uh, well, because of the watches, to be close mm -hmm. to the fire, let's say. And, uh, yeah, I've been working on my, my micro brand, ASA Watches. It's an, an old brand from uh, Fortheim in Germany. Fortheim has been a big watch hub uh, in the last century. Yeah. Uh, now you can still see remains, but uh, yeah, almost all uh, moves to, to Switzerland. And um, yeah, working on my, on my brand. And uh, yeah, good to catch up after uh, some uh, <laughs> interesting times in, <laughs> yeah. in the industry yeah, and uh, well, for everyone. But is, um, yeah. One of the things that I found great was some of the videos that you were putting out on education. And that's one thing that I think that we need a lot of in the microbrand industry is because, you know, a lot of people kind of are self-educated, I guess you could say. And it's kind of good to have somebody that's actually been through school. I mean, now, this is the real deal. Adrian's the real deal. He's been through school. He's he knows what he's talking about. Um, a lot of people, like myself included, I love watches and I started a brand. I'm learning real fast <laughs> that it's not that easy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So had I gone to school, maybe maybe it would have been a little bit easier for me. But uh, Adrian here, he's he's done it. He's been through it. And he knows exactly what he's talking about. So it, it's good to have somebody like that that's willing to put out informational videos because, you know, some people kind of keep secrets close to their chest where Adrian here is willing to share. Yeah, well, that was the that was the idea of this series. Uh, yeah, it's it's so I followed this watchmaking school and it's not uh, it, it, we. I didn't go into very detailed watchmaking. So I I know my way around an automatic movement, uh, diving watch, etc. I cannot do tourbillons or things like that. <laughs> but the, um, the, the, the more uh, simple watchmaking, uh, I think I, I, I can do quite well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I just went to my, my school, did five episodes on uh, different things of the watch. So what you said is, is correct. The, the, the clients are very well educated, um, much above, uh, above average. 
but yeah, usually self-educated. So sometimes people also are discussing about the topic on on a, on a forum or something, and uh, yeah, there can be discussion of what what what's right, what's wrong. So <laughs> I just uh, I don't say that I know everything, but uh, yeah, the things I know I I try to share. And actually, yeah, so there are, there are five episodes on my YouTube channel, mm-hmm. uh, Asa Watches, and I explain different things about. Uh, automatic winding how that works uh, how to get the watch water resistant and how to test if it's water the pressure resistant. testing yep yeah and um so i was actually planning five other uh episodes yeah and, i've been yeah. waiting for those <laughs> so <laughs> the story is that uh the camera guy uh was coming from the netherlands and we would both travel to fort and meet there but yeah. he got corona like the real <gasps> oh, deal no. he, he he got it so all good, but um, it was, yeah, at the beginning. So I'm happy that we didn't go there. Uh, yeah. Uh, How is he doing? Still, uh, all good. Well, he said that after te- he was sick for 10 days at home, so not in a hospital or something, but he's, he's fit. Uh, but uh, he he said he's never been so sick in his life. Like uh, it was it was not, uh, not a small thing for him. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because there's so many rumors going on. Oh, it's not even as bad as the flu yeah. or this or that. It, and, you know, <laughs> uh, I've seen, I, I just got out of the hospital myself. I was in the hospital for two months for uh, a heart and lung infection. I, it wasn't Corona. Yeah. But while I was there, the hospital was just packed full of Corona cases. So I got to see firsthand, you know, how bad it affected some of these people and you know we don't really know the long-term effects like i was watching on the news while i was in there like a guy lost half of his hand because some kind of circulation issue due to the virus and i mean just all kinds of stuff yeah, crazy we don't know what could possibly happen no and uh yeah there, there are many people with many different opinions uh, around mm-hmm. there i'm sure um, but yeah it's uh, how it affects us now it's uh, yeah it's just it's just scary and annoying and i hope that 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 it will yeah the sooner the better it goes uh, yeah the better Absolutely. for everyone it's, it's also now here in switzerland there's sort of a bit of a second wave going on so yeah. Yeah. Then we have to put again the masks at certain places and everything. So yeah, it's a bit uh, better to be over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's better to be safe than sorry. I'd rather be over precautious than than you know have to worry about something a little bit later on and 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 you know things get worse. Um, yeah. We're dealing with a little bit of a second wave ourselves. So hopefully this is the last one <laughs> you know? yeah exactly <laughs> um it, it, it's it's hurt the economy not to get too political or anything like that but you know the worst part is the uh that and we talked a little bit off camera is that it has hurt the economy and a lot of the younger watch brands and smaller watch brands have had to close their doors because of the effects that it's had on the economy um and which is sad because these are all brands that have a brand owner behind them with like an eccentric mind that they, yeah. we don't know what kind of stuff we're missing out on because they're not here now. You exactly. know, they could have exactly. made the next big thing or, you know, or made something extremely cool, but we'll never know. Yeah. In the end, it's sort of uh, yeah, it's a creative part and sort of the, artist part of, of people creating their own product and it's sad that such a such yeah timing or bad timing uh, can can ruin this because i think everyone in the micro brand um industry is uh, must have must have felt it like uh, yeah, absolutely if absolutely. people say no nothing nothing went on i don't mm-hmm. i don't believe that because <laughs> yeah uh, well we were we were chatting a bit before but yeah for me it was Two three months, really, people just closing their wallets and not uh, not yeah. ordering anymore, which is understandable because uh, yeah, everyone. Yeah, did absolutely. That. But uh, I'm happy that things are uh, back, not to normal yet, but 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it. things are starting to loosen up some. I can see. Um, so let's go back a little bit. Like, what's what sparked your love in the very beginning? What sparked your interest in watches and uh, you know mechanical watches? So yeah, my 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 first watch uh, I got from my grandpa was a was a pulsar, which was a quartz chronograph. So. Uh -huh. Uh, quartz is uh, yeah. I'm carefully saying this, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, then went to some some other pieces, and um, well, actually, I I failed my my final exam for high school, only with one tenth of a point for one one uh, topic. So uh, which was actually English. So I hope that you don't uh, hear that too much. But I was very close to making it, but I didn't make it. So mm -hmm. I had to to redo the year, but only uh, two courses. So okay. I had plenty of time. And my dad was like, yeah, I'll go work or uh, yeah, I'll do something. And then, uh, so I did, but also, yeah, the, the, the watches, it, I, I came across a 10, 10 evening uh, course at the watchmaking school. Mm -hmm. And yeah, what, what just really sparked me is, is well, it's, it's, um, it's a luxury project. The product is 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 beautiful. It can be the, the quality that interests me, but really the yeah the roman the romantic image of the watchmaker sitting behind the desk working with yeah. his hands, uh, and I'm romanticizing it a bit too much now with candlelight and uh, all these things <laughs> you know, in the mountains. So uh, of course that was not that was not the thing in 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 the Netherlands, but uh yeah that's the romantic picture that i see which really uh yeah interests me so then i started working uh in a jewelry store where they sold uh with the higher brands uh, uh yeah patek rolex all the all the bigger brands yeah and yeah it was it was a candy store for me and uh <laughs> that was that was that was really great um yeah so so i just continued and this was um was actually a project. So let's let's see to make to make our own watch and let's see how this goes and let's see if we can sell some. And and was sort of a next to studies project, which went uh, quite quite well. And then uh, continuing it a few years next to the studies. Um, but yeah, it was just evening hours and and all these things. Uh, so not really putting so much effort into it. And then I finished. Uh, and then I just said, okay, full time, I'm gonna go for it and awesome. dive into the deep. And so when you're a student and you finish, you you, you don't really have uh, like a mortgage and a, and a, and, a <laughs> and all these things. So I said, okay, if if I dive into it, I do it now. Which, yeah, um, I really enjoy, it and it's not always fun, but uh, yeah. Yeah, that's smart, man, because once you do have the mortgage and all that stuff, you know how many brand owners are, are doing it part time where they have to they're they're doing their whole watch brand plus their daytime job. Yeah, I can only imagine how exhausting it is for them. Like, you know, I don't I don't do other work. I, I, well, I do these podcasts. I work all the time. But it's doing things that I love. I love doing these podcasts. I love doing the reviews. I love working on my brand. As many headaches as, as it comes with, I still love doing it. You know what I mean? Um, probably the best part about all of it is the design part. Where is your favorite part? Um well, I would say I would say well, what gives me the most joy is to to pack the watches. So when I get an order in mm -hmm. and to you know put the strap on everything, uh, warranty, it makes me happy and it's something that the, will make the client happy in the in the near future. So it makes me double happy. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's really the 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 fun part and uh, yeah, the, the brand new and everything. So but yeah, designing is 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 uh, is fun over time but can also give a lot of headaches with uh, um, <laughs> things that don't fit or uh, other problems but yeah, yeah. It, it's the idea and um it really i don't know uh, what your experience was with with iconic um the, the time that it took from I idea till finished prototype that you like let's say three years yeah 
<laughs> yeah, so that's no. that's uh, yeah, that's that's the, basically the timing because <laughs> with with the last one I did was the um, the 1972 based on uh, on a real vintage piece that I yes. that I bought um, um, from a guy in Australia, Ty Mechanic. He has a really cool um, uh, Instagram page, Ty Mechanic, and he only buys very small brands which are not necessarily very valuable but he picks them from ebay and and, and so he has a huge collection of, of small old watches and um but this watch I, I bought also three years ago of him he had two i wanted to buy both but he said no no i'm <laughs> gonna keep one and i give you one <laughs> and then this is what i can do so the idea was already there but yeah before you have final uh, products and everything but but that was a very cool thing to see uh, an old piece getting the modern standards and coming to life uh, yeah coming alive uh, over the over the, the, the yeah the last months so yeah that's that's definitely the the top thing to do you'll have to send me a picture of that for the edited version that we do of the show here all right <laughs> yeah no problem. yeah definitely um but yeah when when we talk about design like you know i think that we all kind of start out with sketch pad and pencil yeah so i've got a sketch pad about this big and it's full it, it's full of all kinds of ideas and just even if i got a couple of marks on one page i'm like okay that'll go for something next else one. so yeah, I, yeah, next yeah, page yeah. <laughs> you know uh but i mean it, it it's it it's a lot of ideas and then seeing some of those ideas go a little bit further and then go a little bit further and then come to life. And then once you start getting your first like computer images and renders of that, I mean, it's like you said, it's a whole romantic type of relationship yeah. between you and the project that that just kind of grows and it's a beautiful thing um so that that's kind of my favorite part i haven't got to the part where i got the package yet so <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe, but, maybe but that all might, you, might change good. for me <laughs> but um yeah so actually i have i have i see it in my own camera now but mm -hmm. i have some this was a, from the first watch that we made so we did also uh, 3D prints, but then oh, yes. bigger size. Yeah. So just to see how the curves and of the case and everything works. So we, yeah, I still have them for for the first piece we did. That's awesome. That that that's a great tool to use for for nowadays. Uh, you know, modern watchmaking i mean yeah just to see how how it looks and and, yeah. and, and what are the dimensions and uh, are the logs too long to think to <laughs> yeah whatever think about if those guys had the 3d printers you know 100 200 years ago yeah, back like, in the day. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a little bit crazy um so where uh where did you go from um you had the the uh pilot and you had the diver and then where did you go from there so it was the the diver and the and and it was the first one. Oh, the then, diver was uh, the first one that's, that's the right. sealander yeah in in black and blue and then uh i did the pilot in black and in blue and now it's the it's the the vintage one which is the the 1972 so i have one piece actually i have one here on my desk oh nice oh, all this so it's it's a quite a thin piece. Uh, yeah. Knowing that there's the ETA 2824 inside, and it's wow. this is the modern spec, so it's 39 uh, millimeters and 200 meter water resistant, and it's the full loom on the whole uh, bezel. On the whole so bezel. It's a vintage, vintage look, but it's it's a really modern uh, modern piece. So that's that's what happened. Then I have. Uh, 100 pieces each dial color so black and blue this is a is a copy of the original one so same size uh same uh, dial same same glass so it's plexiglass oh uh, wow plastic bezel so it's it's really so it's 36 millimeters so so quite uh, quite small for modern standards but yeah these are uh, yeah the copy of the original one and uh, which is more for 
people that collect or maybe have already a few Asia pieces or something. Because yeah. if, it, if it's your first one, I recommend everyone to buy the modern one, which you can use beat around and uh, everything. <laughs> uh, no problem. Yeah. So I did that. And then I took the, so the Sealander with the green dial, green yeah. metal green dial. So this set, and then uh, there was the Kickstarter on the, on the bronze one. Yes, I remember this that. This one is aged already a bit. And I would like to tell you a bit more about the strap later on because it's quite yeah, special. I, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I wanted to get into the tufted strap as well. That was one thing that caught my eye with your brand is that tufted strap. I'd never seen anything like that before. And it, it it's a beautiful strap. Yeah, it's quite it, – and, yeah, I sell it even separate. So yeah. it's quite cool. And it's also – because the leather um, – you know, every strap, it's, it's, it's per it looks perfect when it's new. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, when you put it on the first time, it's a natural material. So it, it you get a bit of wrinkles and this is part of the charm of the leather strap. But yeah, with those ones, it really stays like, like new for quite a long time, which is... Uh... It reminds me of like the old, uh, like the old seats in like a gangster's car you know yeah yeah, yeah. The, the, the old bentley's had it in the doors as well so that's basically where 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 it's from yeah yeah do you have any of those pieces that you can show right now or i could always uh i can always put splice some pictures into the um edited um, version yeah well i would have to put the strap on or something but i can uh, i can send you some pics and uh, no problem all right yeah yeah i think i i think i still got pictures from when we did our interview okay but uh yeah i mean i love those straps and i like i said in the edited version i'll 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 put some pictures up and uh let everybody see it but yeah they're very very cool straps and i'm not even a strap guy because <laughs> normally like straps don't fit me because i got such big wrists yeah. uh so i either have to order them special to fit a nine inch wrist or <laughs> you know uh order a watch and then just order a couple extra links yeah but um but yeah let's get into this strap that you were just showing me let's uh yeah well so to fit yeah just to finish so this is the and this is the latest is the dlc uh version oh okay yeah so it's full black with also a dlc uh clasp and or buckle i have to say um which is my daily beater now because <laughs> this dlc is I, it's a bit of a test and a try but it's great. It, the watch looks like new, like uh, after months of wear. It's really tough, the material. Do so you, I got a bit... Um, have you yeah. used DLC and... Um, what is the other one? PVD. PVD. Yeah. yeah. Have you have you tried out both? And can you tell me what the difference is and and uh, and which, which you like better and why? So... I didn't try both, but um, it's it's not my my expertise uh, to be honest. What like how the chemicals work and all these things, but it's it's um, it's both uh, powder, uh, if I'm correct, and it it's baked in the oven, and gotcha. DLC diamond like coating is 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 harder. And I read quite a bit about it, and some people say yeah, if it's harder, it chips easier. So that would chip off like a piece, which okay, but um, yeah, it's it's it's. I think uh, it all, it would all depend on how well it's done. Also, and um, yeah, so the, the the DLC is harder than PVD. So I went straight for the for the highest quality I could get, and um, yeah, I always have a bit of a mix between. So I have my my local suppliers here in the Jura. Uh, it's a half an hour drive for me, um, but yeah, sometimes I take I take uh, things from Asia as well. For example, uh, a glass like the glass on this watch, I got price uh, quotes for for this dome sapphire. Dome sapphire is quite expensive to to make. Yeah, uh, and and the company in Switzerland would would charge me a hundred dollars per glass. Yeah. So yeah, that was a lot. And then I go to, to Asia to see if I can make the same quality. Uh, there. For sure. Yeah. For but yeah, sure. these DLC cases, I had them done in, in, in a factory in, in Switzerland, which was quite costly. But the good thing is that you can just take 
50 cases, steel cases that you take from your normal uh, stock, mm -hmm. you coat them, you get them back, and it's such a thin layer that it's, everything still fits. Yeah, so the case back, everything. It's it's actually quite crazy. And then you can <laughs> just build a uh, few pieces of that. Uh, so first series was 50, and now made another 50. So I'm I'm very happy, and it was really a try because I was also a bit like, yeah, how will this happen and everything. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm very happy. And in the end, you know, worst case, if you really damage it very hard, and something would chip off, you just put a new case around it. Yeah, absolutely. It's not, uh, send, that big of a deal. So yeah, you send it in, have it replated, and boom, you're done. Yeah, or even if a client would have such a problem, uh, he can just send it back. I put a new case around it and send it back. And uh, yeah, for I'm sure, happy to do that uh, if, yeah. if something happens. But yeah, I'm quite happy with uh, with this piece and uh, sort of a bit of a Batman. I call it the Batman watch, but uh, <laughs> it's like Brian it's like the Dark Knight. I can say that. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm quite uh, quite happy. That is yeah, one so, thing that uh, Asa is known for is is some great customer service. So I've I know that uh, you guys have have a reputation of taking care of the people that um, that purchase from you and and basically begin relationships with you is because that's what it is at the end of the day is especially for micro brands is that you know we're we're starting relationships with these people that purchase from us because ultimately. The goal is to have them purchase from us again. Um, not that we're after their money or anything like that, but we're after their fandom. Their fandom, their, you know, we like to know that they like what we're doing and we know that, that we're appreciated for, for the time that we put in because it is a lot of time. Like I said, I put in three years on Iconic and, you know, there's nothing better than to hear oh you did such a great job yeah that's really Thank cool if people send it with a picture uh, yeah especially like i'm wearing it today or something that's, that's yeah really cool. yeah i cannot wait to see wrist shots of of the halocline out there in the wild because that that's the one thing that i've been waiting for is is to start seeing people posting pictures of it because then I know for sure, okay, it, it's out there now, you know, it, yeah. it's finally went full, full circle. Yeah. Super cool. And yeah, to come back on the, on, on, on the service, I think we did that from the beginning. It just, if people have a problem, you know, don't uh, just fix it and send it back. And uh, absolutely, because yeah, maybe it is not inside the warranty, or so we have an official warranty certificate with all the, you know, standard rules and all these things. But if someone really drops it and he's like, Adrian, damn, I dropped it. Uh, yeah, so frustrating. Everything. Yeah, we just we just fix it and send it back. Like uh, it's not. A, yeah, not absolutely. A I mean, uh, uh, how much is that costing you, really? Whenever it 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 gives you a customer for life, you know, it's yeah, a small exactly. price to pay. Yeah, and uh, it's it's a good feeling when someone gets happy, and uh, you know, with I don't, I also think for big brands, it's also a way of uh, increasing their their profits because of all the service centers and everything. But for a micro brand, that's not the case. They don't have service centers and all these things. So yeah, you want to your client to be happy and uh, wearing the watch that is not in the in the closet, but just uh, that it's out <laughs> there and uh, people are wearing it. Yeah, you don't want it. You don't want it broken sitting in their box. You know what I mean. So no. you you'd rather fix it so that it's out there in the wild, so people can see it. And you know that's all advertising for us. You know, whenever exactly. somebody's watching and wearing. You know. So what's what's next for Asa? So yeah, well, I, so the 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 collection almost doubled, and um, yeah, I'm I'm just trying to to increase uh sales in uh, in in different areas where I, where i haven't been like most of my sales are in europe us canada and some in australia mm -hmm. uh, but there are many other countries that where i don't sell and where there are difficulties with taxes or uh, 
yeah i don't know i i was calling with a guy from brazil today and uh yeah so if there's e-commerce it's 60 percent taxes that is added up to the, the watch so oh my God. yeah that for them uh, a lot but uh brazil is very interesting because he told me that of all the watch markets brazil is half of south america if you count like mexico and down yeah so interesting but yeah as a micro brand it's it's difficult to 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 find partners or people who can import and stuff like that so i'm, I'm trying to to go to new countries plus um i'm doing the asa on tour uh well this i i started just before corona and then mm -hmm. it was of course on tour was not a good thing in corona time <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah, to cut out all that travel <laughs> exactly so i have you have the, oh, the suitcase uh, that you can see uh, there yeah so i have two suitcases so i uh, i made them with with foam and lining everything inside so the watches go in i take the suitcase it's the right measurement that i can take it as a hand luggage in the plane so it looks a okay. bit uh, harry potter like when i walk with this 100 year old suitcase <laughs> walking around and then um yeah so i do tours so i go to to big cities and i spend uh, two three days there and i try to reach as many people as possible in that area and say, okay, I'm here. If you want to see the watches, have a coffee or just want to talk about watches or whatever, um, please send me a message and uh, we meet and stuff like that. So that's really cool because it solves the, the, the problem of, of uh, internet sales where people cannot, they cannot touch, smell, try uh, yeah. the watch. That's so, a phenomenal idea. So I'm going and um, yeah, I hope to sell then a few pieces. And uh, first I have to, you know, get the cost of my hotel back and my trip. And then, uh, <laughs> and then uh, but it's already good to, to go out there. And um, so I did, I did two, one in Rotterdam, uh, where I come from. Uh, so I combined the trip and one in Zurich. And um, my next one will be to Oslo in Norway. Um, because they are the, um, they are very flexible with the traveling and and there's yeah. there's not too much of the of the virus going on there, so that's the next one. And then I hope that things go back to normal. And uh, yeah, let's Hopefully. let's see if I can make it a bit more successful. And then I'm definitely planning to go over to the US. Um, that would yeah, be that's great. quite a long flight and and a bit of a uh, yeah then. Uh, expenses and... if I, well, I, then i prefer to to do to do a couple of cities if i'm there anyway um, yeah but yeah then it's going to be quite a trip and uh, everything so let's let's see how i'm tr i'm testing it in europe and then i will definitely come to the us <laughs> yeah that's awesome man that's a great idea i mean we have these micro brand shows like uh district time um micro Lux, you know a yeah. lot of different uh things like that but you know everything got canceled this year so yeah hopefully we get that back um you know i'm in i'm in the talks with some guys right now uh trying to set up a show in vegas for uh for um uh, june hopefully okay. everything's back to normal by then but we're hoping for a big 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 show and uh you know it'd be micro brands it'd be um knives edc guys tactical guys camping you know just just a big event that everybody can kind of show um we have different speakers from these different industries and things like that and and really make a big event out of it and and that way you know we get a lot of foot traffic in vegas we'll have uh, a lot of people be able to, like you said, they'll be able to touch and feel and not just be able yeah. to look at it online because that is one of the biggest hurdles that we face is the fact that our customers only get to see online. They don't really get to feel it, you know, and yeah. when you're buying a, when you're making a four or $500 purchase, even up to, uh you know several thousand you you kind of want to feel what it's going to be like yeah for, well not only to fit in the watch uh, like if it's too big or too small but you also want uh you know the the clicks of the bezel the um, yeah, yeah 
the yeah. feel of the bracelet yeah. is it too yeah. heavy yeah. is it too thin yeah. is it chintzy or fake feeling or yeah there there's so much that goes into it because there's um there's watches where you know the bracelet looks phenomenal but then you get it in your hand and it feels so cheap you know what yeah, i mean or it's too light or uh, yeah for example yeah or steel bracelets when they're only hollow uh, hollow and, and folded uh, yeah. yeah yeah so, so there's there's a lot that goes into it that the having these events are important for and also i think that a lot of the enthusiasts love to intermingle with the brand owners you know they like to meet us and and see who's behind the brand and that's one of the reasons why i like to do these podcasts and 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 bring you guys a little bit closer to the community um you know obviously this is an in person they can't come up and shake your hand or anything but at least they learn a little bit of something about you and and uh and get to know you a little bit better and get to know your brand better no, it's it's very cool to yeah to share this and also to meet uh, to to well to talk to you again, but also to meet other micro brand owners and it's it's uh, yeah very cool. I went one time to the the wind up fair when it was yeah. the first the first time in New York. Super cool to be with all the micro brand uh, guys and uh, yeah, there having some beers after the <laughs> yeah the shows uh, are the shows are definitely necessary and i can't wait for them to come back and that's one of the reasons why i kind of was thinking about setting up our own show uh especially something big in vegas you know where we got a bunch of people um because it's just like i said it's necessary man i miss it, yeah. it, 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 it i had a lot of fun in chicago last year when we, i went to dc last year and i went to chicago and just had a blast at both of the shows and you know now looking forward to it this year and not being able to do any of them you know it, it, it's been kind of heartbreaking yeah. but and we'll get it back all, eventually yeah and all these guys they usually work alone or in small teams so it's um it's it's very different from other jobs where you can see many people per day uh, or something but yeah so it's good for everyone to to get out of their caves and uh, yeah exactly because man and, there's sometimes where i am in design mode and nobody sees me for a couple of weeks because i'll be in there i'll be on the computer and i'll be doing my design stuff nobody call me nobody talk to me don't talk to me on <laughs> facebook <laughs> i'm in my mode but uh yeah now it, it, it's it's just like like you said it's good to get out and and see the world because a lot of times we are kind of secluded and and we do our work a lot of our work from home and a lot of times we don't leave home for a couple of weeks, you know, and it's like you realize you just kind of wake up one day and be like, man, I need to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's yeah, go so back to that strap it, that you, you yeah. were showing me. Yeah. Well, I, I just got it in and it's um, so it's handmade by a guy in Singapore. So if if i can do a little shout out <laughs> absolutely 47 running 47 running watch straps so okay. a guy uh, called i'm friends Tom with him in in ah yeah oh well, if you know him then it's, it's super cool so yeah. he he makes them by hand and sort of own design and so he made one for the bronze uh watch this one is is worn already the bronze one so it's it's getting the the patina already but yeah, it's sort of a double layered watch strap. And then there is this, this canvas on the inside, which is the wow. same color as the, as the bronze. And um, yeah, so he made one for me and shipped it. And I shipped one watch to him. And this watch is going to travel with him when he shows his straps and everything. Very so really cool. cool. Even on the, on the keeper, there is, I don't know if this works, if I show it, but or if it's in mirror, but he stitched it, it's 47. Yeah. So it's sort of his brand on the inside of the- um, 47 of the Ronin. Yeah, I remember I remember seeing him, uh, his friend request and, and accepting his friend request. So uh, I'll definitely need some pictures of that. 
Hey, yeah, what's up, really, Justin? Really cool. uh, just real quick for the uh, guys in the comments. Dustin Olson, what's up, brother? Thanks thanks for tuning in, and uh, thanks for saying we look great today. And uh, <laughs> Mr. Nigel, how you doing? Mr. Nigel, he is one of our, my sponsors uh, from yeah, Risk cool. Check Monthly. Um, the Risk Check Monthly and Slots of Watches, they do a lot of... Uh, a lot of charity work. Um, they have a monthly watch subscription where they um, they send out a watch once a month. Um, and it'd be nice to uh, introduce you to these guys because they do a lot of cool stuff, uh, a lot of good stuff for the community. Um, we right, just sure. did a uh, 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 Homes for Heroes charity in the UK where we raised over three thousand US dollars for. Um, for vets in the uk that don't have homes you know to help them find places to live and things like that so uh yeah i mean i would love to uh to introduce you to the guys yeah great um they do uh they have a lot of like games and stuff too like they have uh uh not only the subscription, but they do slots of watches where you kind of play a slots game and win a watch. They do a lot of lotteries and, you know, just a lot of fun stuff that cool. they do <laughs> on top of the charity yeah, work that big, they do as well. Team, yeah. <laughs> yeah, lots of cool stuff. But uh, I'll introduce you to the guys um, cool. uh, later this week. Doing good, thank you. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Nige, yeah, Nige is the owner of the company, <laughs> or one of the owners. Okay, but anyway, so um, so yeah, back to the strap. So, uh, you'll have to send me some pictures, some good close-up pictures of that, so that I can uh, I can get it on there. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, I tried some today already, and uh, I'll have to see how good they are, and then uh, yeah, definitely share with you. And uh, yeah, I really like this small. Uh, is it's yeah no, I think it's super cool to to have a look at his website and what he's doing. And uh, it's mm-hmm. almost it's almost sad to wear it, you know, because it's not, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's used, so I don't yeah, <laughs> what to do? It's sort of a little piece of art that you cannot really use it, but uh, but super nice. Yeah. Mr. Jonathan Kopp is tuning in a little bit late. He says, hey, bro, oh. uh, he loves the Sealander. It's really cool. Uh, I sent him a Sealander, black, yeah. Yeah, he a said, question is, cool. what's next? Uh, we already talked about what's next. He's got a vintage piece that uh, is really cool that's coming out. Um, so uh, you'll have to go back and, and watch the replay. But, yeah, we already uh, we already covered what's next. And uh, uh, you and I need to get together. We got to talk, Jonathan. But uh, yeah, Jonathan, he's he's real cool. He's been in the industry for a long time, uh, and you know, kind of does media stuff, kind of like I do. So um, yeah, it, we we've we've worked together in the past before on some other projects. All right, so. What cool. was one of your biggest hurdles getting into the industry and and how did you overcome it? So um well it's yeah it it sounds maybe uh, maybe a bit silly but yeah it's the start where do you where do you start and uh, so I was a student at that time and um I lived close by uh uh chip from AV watches. Yeah, yeah, you know okay, Chip. He's a good yeah. guy. Yeah, very cool guy. And uh, so we 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 talked a bit with him and uh, yeah, had some beers. And he <laughs> actually helped us with the first uh, little renders designing and uh, what to do, how to do things. Um, so that was a, a start. And then, um, then there was the, the the lounge party, which was sort of a sort of a crowdfunding uh, event moment where people could buy the first pieces, and then you had one of the first hundred pieces uh, numbered, uh, so so people could buy at that time, and then uh, they get one of the first series. And, and this um, was the Sealander. Yeah, that was the Sealander Black and Blue. So that was the first thing. Very cool. And, 
Yeah, that's of kind course. of a that different take stuff. on. Uh, that's kind of a different take on crowdfunding. You have kind of like a exactly. like a party and people get to buy. That's that's awesome. That's a good idea. Yeah, you can still there. There's also an, even an after movie from the on on the YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, lounge, it's called Lounge Party, and uh, yeah, so it's sort of a crowdfunding campaign. And uh, well, of course, we were helped a bit by uh, you know parents, uh, the neighbor, and some people who. <laughs> who just uh, support uh, yeah. but that that was great a great way to start and uh, yeah so we had some money to 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 order the first cases first movements all these things uh, so yeah and it's i think i think it's it's very well if i can give an advice to someone who who's thinking about doing the same is the beginning is really i advise everyone to do it next to their job because mm-hmm. Um, for me, it's a full-time job now, but there are many things going on. But when you're starting and waiting, uh, sometimes you you send another render or something, and then yeah, you have to wait for two weeks. Or if things are ordered in the in the end, you also you wait. So there there's there's a lot to do, but it's 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 in in hurdles. So it's not a full-time job from 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 the start. Yeah. I would say so. So that's uh, that's not that's, only for timing, but for for income as well. You know, like yeah, a exactly. lot of people don't make money on the first watch. I know for for iconic, I'm not making anything on on the first watch. Uh, a lot of it's due to COVID and things like that, and uh, some deals that didn't work out uh, to my advantage or or, or work out at all. Um, but you know, it ends up. You know, sometimes you don't make any money till your third or fourth model. Yeah, so it's 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 in the beginning. It it you, you should well take it seriously, but uh, see it more as a hobby than uh, than as a as as a job. Yeah, and um, yeah, but it's it's fun. It's it's uh, yeah. Everyone needs a hobby, you know. So it's yeah. and uh, <laughs> and it, then it's cool to make. If you're passionate about it and you can stick with it and, 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 you know, like, uh, like Adrian said, if you can keep your job and do it part time until you're making money and until you're, you can turn it into something full time, go for it. Yeah. Otherwise I suggest collecting because <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, running a brand is not the easiest thing in the world yeah yeah and uh, also frustrating well you you talked about customs in the beginning of the episode uh, yeah yeah i think i can write a little book about that as well and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah customs yeah, can be a everything. bitch man like you know well, like, uh, everything is ready w- for me to ship out to customers we're just waiting on customs and yeah. you know i get it they can they can uh uh they can um what you call it they get busy okay they they get a lot of packages coming through at one time so they got to get through all of that especially something right now where covid's going on we got the chinese yeah. wars we got the tariff wars so i mean all these things are kind of stacked up against you whenever things reach as customs so all you could really do is deal with it you know yeah. all you can really do is wait and deal with it um the more you call them it doesn't mean that they're going to hurry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. No, no, but, uh, <laughs> you just got to kind of wait it out. And uh, hopefully, hopefully mine will get through here soon and I can get them going. But, but yeah, uh, definitely. Um, it, it's not fun to deal with. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a less fun part of the job. Yeah, very. And, and yeah. that's just it. You know, there's a lot of little things, you know, a, a lot of guys. But, oh, man, I would love to make my own watch and and start my own watch brand. And then I tell them, no, don't fucking do it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because <laughs> I'm like you don't know what you're getting into. Trust me. I said, I'll help you out as much as I can. But at the same time, oh, my God, man, you really just don't know what you're yeah. going to get yourself into it. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, you know, like I'm, I'm happy I, I've done it and I've dove in and, you know, like I said, I ain't making any money yet. 
um, whether it be media or 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 with the watches. And I've been doing this for three years now, and I've stuck it out. And you have to wait. You have to wait for the money to come, and 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 hope that it does. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm still in that phase where hopefully it comes, but. I, I have faith that uh, the iconic will do well once I get past this first um, this first model and and the Stockford Sport comes out and I got a couple more lined up behind it. So you know it it, it is what it is. No, and then, good. And when you have the pieces in stock and ready to ship, and it's uh, that's, yeah uh, yeah, it's a different it's, uh, experience rather than waiting for waiting to ship the pre-order stuff i mean yeah. i hate owing people you know what i mean like i i don't like to owe people so uh knowing that i still owe all these people watches is is not fun for me <laughs> yeah <clears throat> all right so we got sean hale in the comment section how's it going brother um he says he loves risk check monthly uh let me see a lot of uh live from Jonathan. I don't know if you could see the uh comments also. Uh no, I cannot see them here. I don't know. Ah, maybe I should ah yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can Sorry, see them as they come in now. Private chat and comments, yeah, yeah. Ah, cool. <laughs> so um but anyway, yeah, uh so that was uh some of your biggest hurdles is kind of like getting started and and finding your supply chains and one of the things you said is you know you you you're kind of close with with chip from avig yep. and how did that kind of feel to know that he had just offered his help because that's one of the things that kind of got me and like caught me by surprise was how many people in the industry are willing to help yeah which is funny because some would see it as sort of like, uh, I don't know, revealing your secrets or something. Uh, yeah. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, why not? And I think, uh, well, also micro brands in general, it, there's enough space to exist next to each, next to each other. Like Absolutely. there's a certain percentage of the watch industry, which is micro brands, very difficult to get the number on this. Yeah, but um, I don't know. Maybe we say it's three percent of all the revenue. I don't know. Let's let's yeah. t take this number. It's still a huge number. So there's enough space <laughs> for you, <laughs> for me, for for Chip, for for many others. Yeah. And uh, but I thought it it was getting a bit uh, busy. Uh, I did some 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 researching in the into the Kickstarter before I did mine. So I was a bit hesitating. Like, should I do it or not? Or and um, I I found some numbers that. In 2017, there was a, a watch brand started on Kickstarter, uh, or 500 brands have been started uh, in 2017. So it's like one and a half a day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that was going very fast. Then suddenly, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and and a lot of them were failing. I think I had got the same because I had done a little bit of market research myself, and around then it was just like so much was going on like uh 2017 was like the year of the micro brand like yeah. um everybody and their mother was making a micro brand and that led to a lot of failed campaigns you yeah. know i think it was only like 40 42 percent um success rate on kickstarter at the time okay yeah, this, this number i don't know but yeah that, that could be very and and you know kickstarter is a kind of a crapshoot anyway you know when it comes to watches especially you know if you're not already an established um kickstarter brand you have a very hard time if you're a new guy you have a very hard time to succeed yeah to to, to show and to to convince and um yeah i i completely agree and it's, because a uh, lot of people have been burned by new companies you know yeah. so you have to kind of prove yourself before and you know it's it's tough it's tough to to break into that market but then it's weird sometimes you know you look through kickstarter and you're like wow i'm surprised that watch is doing good or or 
and then you see some where it's like, man, that watch is really, really nice, and it's at a yeah. great price. Why yeah. isn't it and doing good? I but think then, it has a lot to do with the all the all the marketing agencies and everything. I don't know yeah. what your experience was, but for me, it's you're you're nervous when you press the start button. You know, oh the my god, you did all the things and everything, and you're like, <laughs> you're doing like this, and yes, <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. And and then it straight away starts emails, 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 emails of people like, hey, I see you started the campaign. We can help you and everything. And it all costs thousands and, and percentages. And the, so I didn't do anything of this. And I, just I didn't said, either. Yeah, it, it, it was a low goal and everything. So I, I was yeah hoping that but everyone would, would, would I support see. me. But. I see some of these big companies, though, use companies like Funded Today, which is probably one of the biggest Kickstarter uh, marketing companies out yeah. there. They cost a ton of money, but it's as long as you work that into your margins, I mean, they work. Um, I know Dwiss used them. I, mean, I don't know okay. if I'm allowed to be saying all this. Or, you know, I don't... <laughs> whatever but i know that they used them their funding goal was only about like two thousand dollars i know that uh funded today takes like three grand right up front <laughs> you know what i mean yeah so it's like uh, that, it's it was the wondering hour that they did that came out right during my campaign and uh you know, it kind of crushed my campaign. Like, so it was like that on top of COVID that really crushed me. Um, but you know, if you've got the money to do it, I, I think that if you got the money to do it and if you're self-sustaining, then I think that you should probably stay off Kickstarter. I, I think that you should leave the crowdfunding for people that need it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I think, I think it's, it, I, well, how I see it is that you can see it as two ways. So one is the more romantic um, part of it. You know that someone wants to create something like a, a book or, or, or something and they don't have the funds to, to do that. And they say, okay, I need $5,000 to pay the first print of my book, for example. Yeah. And they show some pages and everything. So you really help someone uh getting the project alive yeah which is which is the whole uh concept of of kickstarter yeah and then you have other people that yeah go for the hundreds marketing. of thousands of revenue and maybe use marketing uh, a company or something which in the end if someone is getting a good deal and is happy with it uh everyone is okay <laughs> yeah so yeah it's uh yeah I don't but think I, there's there's much wrong on, uh, on 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 doing this or, yeah. I just feel that it it takes away from some of the companies that need it. You know what I mean? Like for some no, of the companies true. that's struggling on there, for one of these bigger, fancier companies that don't necessarily need Kickstarter, I feel like if you back their campaign, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I, I this I agree with you that. Uh, yeah, but at the same time, uh, but at the same time, it is one hell of a marketing tool, you know. So yeah. I think it's uh, also yeah, it's a great way to test as well. Oh products. yeah, test test so your concept. Is the reaction yeah. good or not? Or uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true too. All right. Well, we're reaching the hour mark, so I like to try to keep it around an hour. And, okay. Uh, no you know, I don't, I don't <laughs> yeah, want to go over too much more, because <laughs> it, it was a quick hour, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it goes by fast, but I want to thank you so much for coming on. And, um, you know, it wasn't the first time. It definitely won't be the last time. I definitely want to have you on again. Uh, we have work to do in the future as far as when you do, uh, uh, more in informational videos. I definitely want to help you promote those. I want to, um, help use those on, on, uh, some of the platforms that I work on. Uh, and cool. that will help spread the word with them as well. Um, anytime you need a review done, anytime you need anything from me whatsoever, I'm only a message away. So please, please don't feel, right. don't hesitate to give me a holler. <laughs> yeah. Well, likewise for you. Well, we know where to find each other and uh, send a text or, uh, yeah. 
Absolutely, Great. man. <laughs> All right. Well, it's been it's been fun, and uh, I'm like I said, thanks so much for coming on, and yeah. I will. Uh, thanks for the invite. I'll see you on the next one. All right, brother. All right, man. Take All care. right, man. You take it easy. <laughs>